Hey there, my friend. Welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm the founder here at the Fit Father Project. And today's video is all about creatine. What is creatine and how it works? And I'm really excited for this because my team and I just put an in-depth guide together and we're really searching on YouTube and Google to find a video that really answered all of our burning questions about creatine. Like how do you take it? Do you need to cycle it? What are the best forms? Is it safe on your kidneys? So we decided to shoot this comprehensive video and my promise to you is this. You stick with me on this video and we're gonna answer all those big questions that you may have about creatine. You're gonna leave this video knowing some of the biochemistry of how creatine works and the best forms and how we suggest you use it and some of the safety and common side effects. I know you're gonna learn a ton. So get out your pen and paper, take some notes, and let's dive on in. Fitfatherproject.com. All right, so let's get straight to it. What is creatine and how it works? First thing is we need to define what is creatine. Well, creatine is a naturally occurring substance, meaning our bodies endogenously make creatine. We make creatine in both our liver and our kidneys. And what creatine does is it helps our cells increase something called ATP. And ATP is pretty much the energy currency of, our, of all of our cells, whether it's a muscle cell or a cell in our brain, our cells use ATP to carry out key functions. So by creatine helping increase the amount of ATP available in our cells, we can get more stuff done. So when you go into the gym and you have more ATP, well, guess what? You're stronger, you can get more reps. And actually when there's more ATP, in your brain, you have better clarity of thinking, better focus. So creatine works throughout the whole entire body. Um, and essentially what it does is it works in this creatine phosphate pathway. This is one of our, our body's main energy producing pathways. We have more creatine, we get more ATP, we have more energy, and the cycle repeats itself. So what are some of the research proven benefits of creatine? Well, the obvious ones are, you've probably heard a lot of strength athletes and bodybuilders do creatine, and it's for good reason, because creatine by increasing ATP increases strength and power output. So if you're a person who could normally bench, let's say, uh, 200 pounds for five reps, taking creatine over time, you may be able to get two additional more reps. And what those two reps translate to is more tension on the chest, more muscle damage, better gains over the long haul. So creatine absolutely makes you stronger because you have more energy to carry out the lifts. So strength and power, huge benefit. That's why a lot of bodybuilders and strength athletes do creatine. But creatine also directly stimulates muscle building. And this is kind of some new research that's super cool, is humans have a gene in their bodies called myostatin. And what myostatin does is actually prevents and downregulates muscle building. And we need to have this. It kind of sounds like it's a bad idea, right? Why would we want a gene that prevents muscle building? Well, we want to make sure that we're not building rampant amount of muscle in our hearts. We want to make sure that we can maintain the right kind of calorie balance so we have myostatin. When we strength train and do lifting workouts, myostatin levels decrease for a while. That's why it helps us build muscle. Well, creatine also augments this effect. Creatine further decreases myostatin, directly works on lowering myostatin so you will build more muscle. So it's not just creatine makes you stronger, like for a power lifter that'd be, that'd be great, but for a bodybuilder, creatine also helps you build muscle by directly acting on that myostatin pathway. That's amazing. So that's why a lot of bodybuilder strength athletes use it, but a lot of people don't realize creatine is also good for endurance athletes. Now, although Although when you're running a, you know, let's say a marathon or a really long race, you're not using too much of this creatine phosphate pathway, creatine supplementation does, does, does still have benefits because what the research shows is creatine supplementation when you take it daily actually decreases the muscle damage that you accrue through your workouts. So for runners who supplement with creatine, they tend to recover faster. And that's a great benefit because you can go out and do more runs, accumulate more mileage, more volume, and you're going to improve with your fitness. But it's not just like a physical thing. One of my favorite benefits and the reasons I take creatine all the time is it's actually research shown that creatine helps your brain clarity and mental, mental focus. And so creatine can actually improve your working memory. It can actually keep your brain cells healthy long term. In fact, they have some clinical studies uh, using creatine in children as young as one years of age who have traumatic brain injury. And creatine is very useful by giving the brain more ATP, helps the brain heal and recover from traumatic brain injury. So if you know someone who has a concussion or has ever, if you had a concussion, creatine would be a staple thing that I would include along with fish oil to help uh, you know, really heal your brain and, and recover from a TBI. Another cool thing about creatine, to really wrap up the research benefits section, is creatine is also useful for diabetics. It tends to improve blood sugar control and glycemic control, which is absolutely amazing. So there's a lot of benefits of creatine that aren't just on the muscle and power front. It's good for your brain, it's good for your blood sugar. So it's a reason why a lot of people can find some good use cases to take creatine. So what are some of the common side effects of creatine? Because right now it sounds pretty good. Well, the most common side effect of creatine is some classic stomach upset. And if you take creatine with not enough water, you can get an upset 
upset stomach. And this is part of the reason because creatine draws water into the body. And if you don't have enough water, you can get this crampy stomach feel. But thankfully, that's a very uh, simple side effect to fix by just having more water when you take your creatine. Now, some people are worried about whether or not creatine is actually good for their health. And a common question we often get is, is creatine bad on my kidneys? I've heard that creatine might damage my kidneys. And this is a common misconception. Creatine is absolutely safe for your kidneys. And the reason this misconception exists is because creatine in the body gets broken down into a byproduct called creatinine. And what creatinine is, is really interesting because when we measure kidney function on blood work for people, creatinine is one of these things that we test. It's like as a measure of how well our kidneys are functioning by our creatinine filtration rate. Now, when we take more creatine, we're naturally gonna have higher blood levels of creatinine, right? Because more creatine breaks down, and oftentimes that used to alarm doctors, because it's like, why does this person have such high creatinine levels? Are their kidneys not filtering the blood really well? Well, it turns out if you just take creatine, you have higher creatinine levels, but that does not mean your kidneys are impaired. Um, but I do need to say this, if you are a per person with impaired kidney function, you might have one kidney, or you have some pre-existing kidney disease, or some congenital stuff, you know, you really do wanna work with your doctor to make sure that taking any supplement, including creatine is right for you because you know there are risks associated with that. I will say this, there was a case study I researched in prep for this video that showed that there was a person with one kidney who did a loading dose of creatine, 25 grams per day for five days, and then five grams per day maintenance for 30 days. Person had one kidney, totally fine, no adverse effects. Their kidneys were able to function that. So do you know it's not gonna shut down your kidneys or any problems like that? So the next question I want to cover is what are some of the best forms of creatine? Because if you've read any of the muscle bags or looked on blogs, you probably know that there are dozens of different forms. There's classic creatine monohydrate, there's micronized creatine, there's buffered creatine, creatine nitrate, creatine ethyl ester. And essentially what they're doing is taking creatine and slapping on different side compounds to give it different properties. Well, the punchline of this story is that pretty much good old classic creatine monohydrate is the gold standard and the most effective. Some of these other ones, like creatine HCL, uh, which they basically took hydrochloric acid and you know combined that with the creatine, and their idea is it might absorb better in the stomach. Well, it turns out good old plain creatine monohydrate is roughly 99% absorbed. So it's just fine, there's no absorption issues. And it turns out when they're doing some of these other uh, you know, fancier forms of creatine, if you will, most of them don't work as well as creatine monohydrate as the gold standard. The one other form I would recommend might be micronized creatine, and the only difference between that and creatine monohydrate is it mixes better in water. So if that's a really big concern for you, you want your creatine to stir into that water well, the micronized creatine might be a good suggestion. We do know that some of the best creatine monohydrate uh, comes from Germany. A brand is Creapure. A lot of the major supplement companies source Creapure in bulk and use it in their products. That's the one that I personally use um, from bulk supplements and it's really great. So that's something to consider. Ditch the fancy forms, stick with creatine monohydrate. So. This almost begs the question, Dr. A, how do I take creatine? What are the best approaches? Well, there's two main approaches to taking creatine. The first one is like the old school approach, which is the loading protocol, where they used to say, hey, why don't you take, um, the actual figure is 0.3 grams per kilogram, per day of creatine for five days to really saturate the body. And then you go on a maintenance dose for the rest of the time that you're on creatine. So for a lot of guys, someone who's like 180 pounds, for example, this might look like 20 to 25 grams of creatine per day for five days, and then a maintenance dose of like three to five grams. That was the old school approach. And the idea was that when you take a lot of creatine all at once, it saturates the muscle stores quicker. And this is a very key point about creatine. Unlike something like caffeine where you take it and then you get an immediate kind of like dose effect and 30 minutes later you know you took caffeine, you get a stimulatory effect. The way creatine works is different. It's not like you take it and then creatine starts working. It's about saturation stores in your body. Creatine is largely stored in the muscles and when you take creatine regularly, those stores build up far beyond what normal creatine stores would be, and then you get the benefits of the strength and the ATP and the antioxidants, et cetera. So that is um, how creatine works. So the loading protocol, the idea is let's rush it in really fast. And now there's another approach which is kind of like the slow steady maintenance approach. And this is the one that I actually do recommend and personally use, and that's taking three to five grams of creatine post-workout every single day. Your stores will get just as saturated if you did a loading dose, but just maybe not as quickly. It might take seven days instead of five. I don't know, there's not actual science on how quickly it happens, but point being is the five grams works just as well over time as these big loading doses. And something that I actually recommend against the loading doses is a lot of these old products, like a famous one was like Muscle Tech Cell Tech, used to be about 60 grams of sugar with a lot, a lot of creatine, you'd load that stuff up, and it's just like, come on, you do not need 120 grams of sugar to drive your creatine into your muscles, and you don't need all 
all that amount of creatine. You just need to take it consistently. And there is some research too that suggests that taking the creatine post-workout gives you the best bang for your buck in terms of muscle building. It's not a huge factor, but again, remember creatine does act on myostatin. And then lifting also acts on myostatin. When we lower myostatin, we increase muscle building. So creatine has that effect post-workout. That's why I take it with some whey protein post-workout. Whey gives you enough of an insulin bump to drive creatine well into your cells. And so that is the best protocol. So I wanna get into some common FAQs we get. Um, first FAQ is do I need to cycle creatine? I've heard that I need to take it for one or two months and then take some time off. That is another myth. We used to believe that to be true, but it turns out that you get benefits of creatine by taking it long term. So you can pretty much take three to five grams of creatine post-workout for the rest of your life and get these benefits. Um, second question, what happens if I stop creatine? Well, what happens if you stop creatine? It takes around six weeks for your saturated creatine stores to return back down to baseline. Um, and so over those six weeks, you're gonna have Ideally, you have less ATP production. And again, your body can produce plenty of ATP without creatine, but you're not gonna be at that super physiological level of creatine. So about six weeks, you're gonna get back to baseline and you may find that your workouts aren't quite as strong, but it's not like you're gonna lose the strength and the gains that you made while you're on creatine. Something like an anabolic steroid, for example, where you made gains on the steroid and you get off and you do like a post-cycle therapy, for example, or something like that, and you lose all your gains. Totally different story with creatine. Creatine, again, is all natural. It's giving you real gains that you get to keep, but you may find that your strength is a little bit, you know, you may not, might, might not improve in your workouts as quickly when you stop the creatine, but you can totally get off it if you want, absolutely fine. Next thing, do I need carbs with creatine? Again, we kind of talked about that with the whole sugar thing. The answer is no. You know, creatine is driven into the cells by two things, by insulin and actually some uh, sodium as well. But so creatine can get just fine through the creatine transport protein with a little bit of whey protein. But you know, if you're taking it every single day, your stores are gonna be totally saturated. Next question we get, is it safe on the kidneys? Again, yes, it totally is. For normal healthy people with normal kidney function, creatine does not have problems. Now, are there certain rare cases out there where certain people have had problems? Yes, but there are so, so, so rare overall. Creatine is one of the safest and most effective research supplements. And one other thing I would say is who can benefit most from taking creatine? I would say, first off, vegans and vegetarians uh, could probably benefit the most because creatine is naturally found in fish and meat. And if you're not getting in your diet, you can find that you get a big benefit to taking creatine monohydrate as a supplement. In fact, they even show that with vegans and vegetarians who take creatine, they get around a 10% improvement in their working memory. More ATP in the brain because creatine is very helpful. So that's a huge benefit. Definitely recommend it to my uh, vegan vegetarian friends out there. Consider taking creatine monohydrate for sure. Really good thing to add into your diet. And who might not want to take creatine? Well, one thing to actually mention to kind of wrap up this video is people who are in weight controlled sports. So either a wrestler, maybe an MMA fighter, um, and maybe a rock climber, for example, might not want to take creatine. Why? Because creatine does have this cell volumizing effect where it draws water into your muscles. It'll make you look bigger, it'll make you stronger, but you can gain up to maybe five pounds of water in some cases for some people if you use creatine. I personally find that it's not the case if you don't do this big loading protocol. That tends to give guys the biggest bump in weight gain, but if really being at a certain weight is super important to you, then I would consider not taking creatine monohydrate or at least doing it for a little bit and seeing how it affects your particular weight. As you take creatine for longer times, and especially if you're doing that maintenance dose post-workout, you're not gonna find, you're finding your body will normalize um, those water weight fluctuations a little bit more. So though, that is kind of like the 101 of all the main FAQs we have on creatine. So again, our take creatine uh, as a punchline is incredibly safe incredibly effective, confers a lot of benefits to strength, the muscle building, the brain health, the glucose control. We recommend the maintenance, five grams per day in your post-workout shake long-term, um, and that is pretty much the, the 101 on creatine. So I hope you found this video valuable. I know we covered a lot. We have a big in-depth guide linked below in the description of this video where you can go to the Fit Follower Project blog. You pretty much have most of this stuff written out. We also give you some recommended links on Amazon, some products that we trust, some super, super high quality products that actually contain that Crea Pure from Germany. They're really, really good stuff. So you wanna get the good stuff. Anyways, we're in. I hope you found this valuable. If you like this video, you want more awesome stuff that's just pure information, no BS, then subscribe to our Fit Follower Project YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos already waiting for you on the channel on the best supplements. But we also cover workouts for fat loss and muscle building how to actually eat healthy and stick to a diet long term. We are the health experts for busy guys and fathers over 40, so we're happy you're here. Definitely want to invite you to subscribe. Check that notification bell, and if you like this video, drop us a comment below. Let us know. We put a lot of time into these videos. We love creating these, and we love to hear from you too, so give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment below, and I will see you around the channel, my friend, and you can check out the definitive guide to this on our blog as well, and I'll talk to you very soon.